video is going to show you how to mix any color you'll ever need. And when you first start painting, it's it's a bit daunting, uh, color mixing and, and figuring all that out, and it will take you a while, but this will break it down and make it very simple. Because when you go to a, an art store or you're on Amazon or wherever you get your supplies, it's... You know, there's going to be a whole wall of, of countless colors to pick and choose from, and that gets exhausting and expensive, where every painting, you have to sit there and try to color match and try to find the exact specific color that you're looking for, which a lot of times, as you progress, there's going to be countless shades within each color that you're going to use within a painting, and you're not going to be able to find that in a store, so to be able to be comfortable with color mixing is one of the main things that will allow you to advance as a painter so I'm gonna break it down and show you that with just the primaries and white you can make any color in the world and as you become more practiced in this you'll begin to look at objects or photos and simply know intuitively what colors will make that uh, as a mixture so you can look at something and say, okay, that's a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get started with this. And um, first things first, we'll just put these on a clean palette here with the white background so we can see everything clearly. And beginning with the primaries, we'll go from there. So this is just primary blue by Liquitex. It's a good acrylic paint. Primary red. Primary yellow. And a bit of white. just a little bit of water and then a wipe. I have a paper towel off screen and that's the best. In most cases, just moist bristles will help you get the best consistency and the best mixture and the best blend. Sometimes if you're gonna do a glaze or a wash, you can use a lot more water, but that's a different, that's a different thing. And I have videos showing you how to glaze and wash under beginner tips album which this will be under also. But first things first, if you do a red and a blue, you're gonna get a purple. And with red and blue, you'll get a good purple with about a 50-50 cut combo. Obviously, if you want it to be within this purple, there are countless options. I mean, if you add more blue, then obviously you'll get a bluish purple. If you add more red, you'll get more of a reddish purple, which depending on whatever you're trying to do. Um, can be valuable and then add a little bit of white to each of these colors and you'll just get a, a brighter, lighter version of that. This is more of a lavender type color but you don't have to go buy purple you can get multiple purples just from these two and then we can move on to orange which usually it's going to be kind of a, a, a one to three type thing with less red. You're going to use more yellow than red. It's, the red's a lot stronger than the yellow, so to get a good orange like that, you usually want to add a bit more yellow, but again, depending on whatever color you're searching for, you can add more yellow or red based on what you need. And then same thing. I'll show you later on, but usually whenever I'm mixing a color, like if I'm doing a an orange object, I'll just mix up my main orange like we just did. 
I'll add a little bit of white like we just did and then I'll add a little bit of black to the other side and then I'll have my main color my highlight color and then my shadow color and I'll do that uh, at the end of this a little bit of red and white for a pink And then to make green to yellow and blue and this is similar to the orange you know the blue is so much stronger than the yellow that you know you only need a little bit of blue and you'll get a nice green like that and you can add some yellow to the green to make it more lime and brighter can add a little bit of white to the green to make it to get a highlight color within that can add more blue make it a deeper green and so on so on and I'll show you later on you can even add a light blue if you mix a white and blue and get a light blue and add it to that then you can get an aqua like a mint to aqua type color And as you start to do this more and more, you'll see that the combinations are just endless and you truly can get any color you will ever need just from these. But we'll get into a little bit more of that later on. I'll show you some of the variations and how, how deep it can really go. And to get a brown Usually a green and a, and a, um, a red will give you a nice brown. Just give you that good mid-brown, like a, a burnt umber or something. And then obviously same situation, you can always just add a little bit of white to give you a light brown, a little bit of, a little bit of black once we mix that up later give you a dark brown or even an ochre like a yellow ochre or a yellow oxide which is a good underpainting color you can add a little bit of white a little bit of yellow to this brown base and then you can get that that yellow ochre is starting to come right there which is a great wash or underpainting color just to give everything a little bit of glow a little bit of warmth And this is just a example of a black here that you can do. If you mix all the primaries, you can get a black. And this is, I, I, I do this sometimes um, because it does give you a more interesting black. So if you, if you don't need a pure black, but you need a really dark tone, sometimes this is a nice option for that you can see how dark that gets and it is it is a black but the it needs to be one to one to one like a really clean ratio otherwise it'll have a tint to it but sometimes that little bit of tint you get makes it a more interesting uh, black for certain paintings so like a you know shadows in a mountain that it's more of an earthy type black or you know shadows in a forest or something if you're doing a landscape this is a really good deep deep shadow type color as opposed to just using a black out of the tube so mixing those primaries will give you the black if you need it
but sometimes I do prefer. I usually do have Moore's Black on my palette, just because, as mentioned, I will usually add, I'll, I'll mix up or have that main color, and then I'll add a touch of white for the highlight, a touch of black for the shadow, and then it's just nice to have make to everything real quick, but you can see if when you mix up that black, if you add a bit of white and then really show what it is, it does have a little bit of a green tint there because you didn't mix it up perfect. And sometimes that's a great thing. Sometimes it's, it's not. So it just depends, but that's always an option if you want it. And here, as I said before, I do like Moore's Black. So if you are going to just start out, you don't have to, but it's going to make life a little easier for you. If you want to get grays, using black and white, um, commercially made, really does give you a better gray, at least in my opinion. So if you get white and black and then those three primaries, then you can also get that grayscale. So if you want to do a monotone grayscale painting, Black and white can really give you a good clean range within that. If you try to use white with what I just did, as you saw, it had a green tint to it. It wasn't really a pure black. So sometimes it's it's a little better to do this. Then you can add more white to get a lighter gray, more black to get a darker gray, and you can have an entire gray spectrum within that. So it's good to have sometimes. And then again, if you want to add a little bit of a little touch of that black to any of your main colors you know you're going to get a pure shaded darker variation without any pollution or if you try to mix up your own black there may be a little bit of pollution in there but it just depends on the situation but here I'm going to show you a lot of the variations you can do within these colors so for example if I was doing a painting here with a, a bulk green you can make that even if, whatever, it's just a circle, you're painting green, you can make it so much more interesting and, and such a better painting just by adding tons of variations of green within that. You know, as it goes from the bottom of that shape where it's going to be shaded or on the opposite of the light source, you're going to have the darker green where you may add a little bit of brown or a little bit of black. And then as it moves its way up, it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. So there may be as you get in that upper portion, you may add a little bit of yellow and give it a little pop to that green, make it brighter, add a little bit of white at the top and really get that highlight green. You may add a little bit of blue to the green to get some aqua on it. On that mid cooler back end, you may add some of that. So there's so many things you can do within this with just these couple colors. We can make a half dozen different green shades right here, which I'm doing. So. There we mixed up our green with the blue and yellow for our main green. And within that I added more yellow to give a nice lime green or a brighter version of that. And then here I'll show you, uh, I'm just going to mix up some baby, baby blue here, which is just the primary blue plus the titanium white. You'll get a sky blue. It's actually a really nice color for skies. It's, it's kind of like a cobalt blue type thing but then you can add that baby blue into some of that, that lighter yellow green, lime green there and get like a, a light aqua. And you can add even more blue and get like a mint. So you can see it's cooling down and getting into a mint type color. So just within a couple seconds here, you can get a little highlighted version of that if you need an even brighter version. You can see it goes from green to lime green to aqua to mint. So for any green object, you can have tons of different shades just within it, just in a couple seconds, just with these colors. So there we can pull off a highlighted version of that lime green and get a really bright green for that. Those highlight type colors. If you needed to.
in that main green color you can add a little bit of white you could highlight for that you know it's just it's endless so when you see me um, mixing colors on my palette and it looks kind of crazy and sloppy to me this is all um, this is what I'm seeing it's just I'm making a bulk color and then I'm pulling all kinds of different variations off of it and that's it you know to me it it's easier and makes makes sense that way and then as I mentioned before just touch a little bit of black in any of these versions and then you'll get a the shadow color of that so we add a little bit of black to that main green and then have the shaded color of that green so and then as far as your your water cup goes and you're mixing um, you know a little bit of taint in the water is no problem but if it starts to get too bad just use your, use your judgment on that but it's not going to affect your your color mixing too much until it gets to something like this where it gets like a soup then you got to change your water but you don't have to change your water every single time you dip your brush um, so you don't have to worry about that too much and so there I just we went over with the green an example of all the different variations you can do within a color but just to show you here what I usually do is I'll just mix up or, ha or have my base color and then I'll just add some white to one side and get a lighter version of it from a highlight and I know I'm repeating this uh, I already told you this but I just wanted to show you real quick and then show you one last time here at the end because this is usually what I do you don't have to get super complicated with it most of the time and then I'll just add a little bit of black to the other side and there you go you got your mid-tone highlight and shadow and that's a great place to start if you're a beginner that's a great place to start get your color you want add a little bit of white for your highlight add a little bit of black for your shadow and that'll get you going in the right direction there and there are so many different colors that we didn't even touch on here and you know experimenting with these things is how you're gonna get good but you can grab a little bit of orange there just to show you an example of mixing and matching even within this is sometimes you know it'll turn to mud on you and that's just part of the learning process but just like right there we added a little bit of orange to the pink and you can get like that peach, like the really bright peach type color, which is a great sunset color. You know, for the bottoms of clouds, you put like a purple cloud and then you put a little bit of that, that bright peach that we just mixed up right there on the bottom of those clouds and it can make them pop. So there are just countless things you can do with just the primary is white and black. So hopefully this helps get you started and, and thanks for watching.